2020 seemed like the perfect season to start everything new. The Red Sox had finally gotten over the 2019 season. And we had a new boss, Hyam Bloom, smartest guy in the room. And then, in a matter of months, we ended up losing Alex Cora, Mookie Betts, Chris Sell. Everything was going downhill. We were rock bottom. And then the rock bottom broke and we, we fell even deeper. And... Based on how the 2020 season was, was starting out, with the players fighting the owners, um, everything was already a mess, and we were all just kind of hoping that things would just settle out. The lockdowns were driving everyone crazy, everyone was getting divorced, everyone was becoming an alcoholic, it was a mess. We needed something, and we needed baseball, and, and I guess we got it. <laughs> You see, the Red Sox started the season with only two starting pitchers. Now you may say, hey, what the hell are you talking about? There was five. Really? If you pause this video right now, pause it. If you pause this video and you and you sit back and you meditate and you look deep inside of you and you remember those times and you think, who started the first five games for the Boston Red Sox? Would you be able to answer that? No, no, you can't. See, we only had two starters. We had Eovaldi and Paris. No, we did not count Ryan Weber. He's not a starter. It's, a, it's incredibly hard to compete when you only have two people going every five days that can actually give you a chance to win. Throughout this whole nightmare, there was one sliver of light that kept just letting us know that better days were to come. His name... Heim Bloom. It was a hell of a first year for Heim, but he kept on cooking and whew, what a chef. I'll let you know. This guy, he, from the end of 2020, he added, until now, he added Hunter Renfro, Kike Hernandez, Garrett Richards, Man Andreese, Garrett Whitlock, Adam Ottavino, Martin Perez 2.0, Marvin Gonzalez, Nick Pivetta, Connor Siebold, Franchi Cordero, Hirokazu Sawamura. Now I know, I know. I've missed some names, probably, you know, some minor leaguer who's in there, and some other pitchers, and some other batters. And some a few of these were added at the end of 2019 of the 2020 season, but but it doesn't change the fact that coming into 2021, we're so much different. We're actually a good ball club, we're a complete ball club. You might be saying, like, dude. What the hell are you talking about, man? Like, stop getting... Stop talking about them. They're not even that good. Like, I'm not saying we're going to win the World Series, but... Just... Just breathe. And just watch. Kiko Hernandez have, has been having a hell of a spring. This guy has been hitting. He's been walking. He's been... He's been doing everything that a leadoff hitter needs to do. Which is freaking great because I feel like this year is actually, it's his year. First time in his career that he's actually had a set position within the team. And not just be a kind of a replaceable guy that they put in wherever they need him at. Like in just in random times. This spring, 15 for 45. Two home runs, four doubles, six RBIs. 11 runs, nine walks, eight strikeouts. This, I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Alex Cora was saying that, um, you know, they're challenging him, challenging him to get on base. Um, they want to stay off pitches so he can, you know, s slow down the strikeouts. So he can actually start getting more walks. We've also seen flashes of his glove work and the excitement that he brings to the team. So apart from the defense, he's like, he's actually a player that brings energy to the team, which is highly needed after last year's dump. Last year was a mess and... The team was depressed the whole time. This guy, we, we need people like KK, not just in the whole like baseball scale, but his personality, we need it. And also, as you can see here, the, his, his swing pretty much plays pretty good with Fenway. If you look at all those doubles that he hits, most of them are gonna be home, would be home would have been home runs in 2019. Why did I use 2019? Well, that's because there's more games played in 2019 than 2020. And screw 2020. It sucks. 
Garrett Whitlock is also one of the best stories to come out of the spring. This guy deals. He has been nasty. You know, uh, like it says right here, Whitlock has gotten on the Red Sox radar with the heavy fastball. 95, 96. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Got some good cheese. Got some, got some, got some speed. Got some, got some heat. You know, but apparent. Not just that. It's the changeup. So he has a changeup now that he's actually striking out people with, and it's been working. It's been. Wor- I don't know what he did. Something clicked, but something happened, and it's working. In nine innings that he pitched in the spring, he stacked up pretty nice. 12 strikeouts. So 9 innings pitch, 12 strikeouts. That's that's pretty good. We have future future rookie of the year, Bobby Dalbeck. What a freaking beast. He breathes on a ball and it goes like 450 feet. This guy crushes balls. All kinds of them. Fast balls, breaking balls, tennis balls, whatever you want. He'll send it flying to the air. This guy has such an easy swing. It's like he's not even trying. He's like... That he looks like he's warming up with the the warm-up swings that people take before they actually get in the batter's box. The, he hits it, he touches the ball, and it goes flying. It's it's crazy. It's this guy has such an easy power, and he's he's gonna take it into his full rookie year. It's super excited to see him. I mean, it's and it's no surprise that, that Dalbeck has issues with, with strikeout. That's pretty much a given with power hitters. They kind of strike out or hit homers. They kind of. It's kind of the, the way of life, I guess. Um, but something that he has been working on, see right here, he struck out 14 times in the first 11 games, uh, but he struck out three times in the past five. So he's been he's been slowing down the rate of the strikeouts. He's been working on it. Um, he really doesn't have to work on power. Kind of <laughs> this guy just he hits it and it goes, man. It, it flies. Adam Adam Ottavino has to be one of the craziest moves that Haim Bloom pulled off this off season. The Yankees were shocked. The Red Sox were shocked. The baseball world was shocked. People who don't even follow baseball were like, what the hell's going on? Aren't they supposed to hate each other? Um, I don't know what happened there. I wish I knew more into this story. I don't know what Haim said to Cashman or what the story of it was. But damn. Haim's cooking. It's his kitchen. We're, we're just have to watch him do his masterwork. That's all it is. You know, and... And coming off a season where we had no pitchers, where we were throwing just random people into the mound to finish the games, having Adam Adovino is one of the coolest feelings, feelings that you can have as a Red Sox. The most refreshing part of starting this 2021 season is the fact that we actually have a starting rotation. Eduardo Rodriguez is back. We have Nick Pavetta. We have Garrett Richards. Tanner Houck. Matt Andreese being set up as a long reliever in case any of them go, you know, can't pull up too much weight. Nathan of all these stealing absolute heat. So I'm hoping he's back. And all in the background, Chris Sell is still coming back. We finally have a starting rotation that can that can we can depend on to at least give us a chance to win some games. I know you can say, dude. It's just spring training. Like, stop. (laughs) Calm down. And I get it. I get where you're coming from. But there's another another thing that we haven't talked about that is going to have a huge impact on this team. And it's the Alex Cora effect. 2017 was this dull place. And Alex Cora came and changed the culture. He let people be more free, more open, more expressive of themselves. He pushed them to their limits. Starting with Erod being one of the prime examples, Alex Cora made sure Erod wasn't going to be some bum on the mound who took the mound every couple of days. He was going to be a good pitcher and a great pitcher. He made him. He, Erod struggled, but Cora kept pushing him and pushing him until he became one of the best pitchers in the league in 2019. And I believe he would have been one of the best ones in 2020 if he had, if he hadn't gotten the heart condition because of COVID. Devers improved so much because of Alex Cora and so did Sam the Bogarts because Cora was there teaching them pushing them and they believed in in Cora and now that same feeling is what it feels like in in 2021 2020 resembles that at dual atmosphere of 2017 and we could see it on the players we could see how they weren't ready for the season we could see how their expressions were completely different from the previous teams and now Alex Cora is back 
the new players want to play for him the old players want to play for him everyone loves him everyone respects him so the atmosphere is completely different alex cora is pushing the new players as much as he was pushing the other ones in 2018 he's pushing Mar martin perez to throw more strikes he's pushing um kk to be more aggressive at the plate but more selective to be better at being a lead off hitter to be better on the defense he's just he's trying to unlock all these different potentials for these players that's not even including alex verdu has never worked with him but um that's nick pivetta and all these other players they have so much to learn from alex and alex has such an impact on the players that they want to listen to him and they get better because of him and i know it sounds silly but the core effect is very real. The 2021 season is about to begin. Fanway is opening up. Fans are coming back to the stands. And it feels like things are going right for the first time in a couple of years. Now, Sox Nation, Sox fans, I know y'all have been hurt. I've been hurt. It's hard to believe, but times are changing. I'm not going to tell you we're going to be in the World Series this year, or maybe in the next one, but we are taking the right steps to be one of the best teams for the years to come. Trust in Heim. Trust in the process. The Boston Red Sox are waking up.